we're back. Yes, we're back. And this time we're at Brunswick Mill in Ancoats in Manchester. 1840, grade two listed, one of the earliest spinning mills in Manchester and on the original site of Ancoats, birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. So we're gonna try and get inside the mill, take a look around and see what it's like. So come with us on our tour of Brunswick Mill Ancoats. So as you can see, it's a seven story mill um, it's kind of like got this courtyard when you walk in. We're just coming off Bradford Road um, in Manchester. So out there is, is Bradford Road through that archway. And you've got this courtyard sort of arrangement. Beautiful cobbles on the floor, original cobbles probably. And um, you've got the seven stories of the mill behind us. Now this part here, this lower part, which is one, two, three, four stories high. This, back in the day when this was a functioning mill, was a, a shirt factory um, so this part here was was used as a shirt factory the rest of it without all the machines in for the spinning of the cotton so we're going to go now from this amazing courtyard and we're going to take a look inside the mill now there's a little doorway there so we've got access to go into that doorway and see what's down firstly on the ground floors. Apparently it's utilized by quite a few uh, creative people. There's certainly a, a recording studio in here and you can hear the bands sort of rehearsing as I speak to you. Anyway, let's get inside the mill. As you can see, Connor's already in there. So I think we're in some kind of creative space or it's been some kind of creative space down here. It's all very colourful and it's good to see it's been put to use. A bit like a youth club a little bit, but quite, um, it's quite amazing. It smells a bit of beer down here to be honest with you. So we've just discovered one of the old and original lift shafts and it's just behind what is what looks like a normal looking door. I think it's a lift shaft. Connor's just peering in there now, but let's just have a quick look. Look at this. Wonderful handle on here. Proper old fashioned job that. Now I'm not quite sure what this room is, um, some of the people that rent a space in here I think have invented some kind of or created some kind of little chill out room, um, certainly music fans and they uh, just allowed me to pop the camera in and take a little peek into their front room, chill out room, whatever you want to call it, but quite a nice little space it is. So, we're on the ground floor at the minute, and as with all these places, it's always the lower floors in these old mills that get used. The upper floors, you've got a classic case of aerial dereliction. But I'm keen to get up there and see what it's like on the abandoned floors in this place. But terrifyingly, we have to use this lift here, um, which is a cross between a goods lift and an antique. Um, so, we're going to try and get to the top floor. Um, I've just been told that when somebody just took the lift just then and used it, that when the lift started to go up, the lights in this place dimmed. So, fingers crossed we get to the top floor. Anyway, let's go and take a look. Okay, so we're in. In the lift. <laughs> we're just hoping we get to the top floor. I've put full faith in our uh, lift operator, Connor here, who's shown us around the mill. And we're two Connors today, and with Connor who you know, and Connor who's kindly invited us long, along to the mill uh, to show us around. Are we moving yet? Are no, we're not moving. Oh, oh, we have to press a button. Apparently the lights right. might dim. Press and hold. Yeah? 
Oh, we're going oh. up. It's moving. I don't know if you can see that there behind there. Okay, seventh floor, top floor. Are you going to open the door, Connor? Wow. So at the time when this place was built, 1840, it was one of the largest mills in Britain. Now, larger mills were yet to come um, because in the 1880s there was a mill building frenzy, weren't there? So, because when you look at it from the road, it's not, not the biggest mill in Manchester at all anymore. But at the time, like I say, 1840, it was one of the largest mills in Britain. Um, Obviously, urban dereliction up here now, but some wonderful views of the uh, city centre. And the, again, we always see it, don't we? We always get it in my videos, and I keep seeing it, and the wonderful, the vaulted ceilings, the brick arched ceilings. Of course, this was built as a fireproof mill, and they had to try and build them fireproof because of the cotton. The cotton was so uh, flammable, the cotton dust and the actual raw material of cotton was so flammable. So they tried to build it as a fireproof mill, and I think these vaulted ceilings were part of that design. Some wonderful views of Manchester from here. Uh, you can see Miles Platin and Ancoats. So down on the right hand side there, there's the Ashton Canal. Got the gasometers in the distance, and as we pan across, Miles Platin. You'll see there Bradford Road in the foreground, and look at that mill just over on the distance. L look at the uh, look at the unique chimney on it. That is Victoria Mill in Miles Platin. Now, what's the significance of that mill? Well, it features in a film called A Taste of Honey. Now, I love the film A Taste of Honey. I'm always going on about it, but it features in A Taste of Honey, and it's a wonderful backdrop to this particular scene here. Our two characters, played by Rita Tushingham and Murray Melvin, were here in Miles Platin on the Rochdale Canal. I think it was filmed about uh, late 1950s, 1959, 1960. I, th I think the film came out in 1961. Uh, but here they are on the Rochdale Canal, and in the background there is um, Victoria Mill. And if you've not seen that film, you really should see it, if you, particularly if you live in Manchester, because there's some great, great archive footage of uh, how Manchester was back then. I've got to admit that we've been in quite a few mills in my videos, but to be here, to be here in a mill from 1840, in Ancoats, sort of Miles Platin area, this was it, this is where it started, the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. There were mills before this, but there were small workshops, there were individuals and families um, doing things with the, with the materials. This is the first of the industrial mills, the biggest of its type in Britain at the time. And it's kind of like, there's something authentic about this place, being here in Ancoats in one of the early mills. Yeah, these are the inside. Some of them are shards, you can take them as others. Oh, just eggs in that dust. I'm standing on a door. Nice large screen. A couple of Sony TVs there. I'm not quite sure what it is with the, about the TVs in here, but we've just seen the two old Sony TVs there, and there's another one here now. So cotton spinning and the cotton mill sort of reached a peak uh, in Manchester, certainly in Manchester and probably in Britain, around 1912. 
And by 1929, the industry was kind of um, in decline. This place was sort of propped up by um, a, a company that was set up by um, the Bank of England. It was called the Lancashire Cotton Corporation. And then in 1964, Courtauld's took over. They were like a big company that dealt with all fabrics and things like that. And basically the mill closed as a cotton mill in 1967, the year I was born. So since 1967, it's been used by various businesses on different floors. But uh, amazing place. Now, later in its lifetime, uh, some of the mill machinery, some of the spinning uh, machines were actually heavier than the mill was intended to take. So some of these floors had to be strengthened uh, later in the mill's lifetime. And in 1909, it was a first for the mill because it was one of the first mills in Manchester to be converted to electric uh, power. Uh, and it was connected to the Manchester Corporation power system. Now, I did a video about uh, one of the earlier power stations in Manchester. So it was probably um, that early power station on Bloom Street in Manchester. If you go and watch that video, that this mill was connected to that early primitive power sort of grid in Manchester, if you like. Um, it does say that there was two additional towers built um, to house the electric motors that were to drive the machinery. It's difficult to assess which of the uh, towers that were built because although there, there looks like there's a tower there on the side, I think that's probably a lift shaft, so I'm not quite sure. But that's what's written about this particular mill. So, as with all these places, navigation around the building isn't that easy. We're going to sort of try and get past this board now and get into another section of the mill and see what it's like in there. And now, we're going to walk through the... You can't, you can't, I'm not lying when I say you Oh, piss off. <laughs> There's another dead pigeon. Wow, <coughs> you could just jump through there. <laughs> oh, see on the roof. So it was actually, uh, wow. it was actually worth coming through because we're in a kind of a, a, a staircase now. Pigeon shit everywhere, dead pigeons everywhere, quite horrific. Probably breathing in pigeon shit dust, which is not ideal. But it's actually quite beautiful. I'll show you the brickwork. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful arch there. Love it. Absolutely amazing. Um, coming from this column here. Um, and then if you look at the stair shaft, all this will be obviously original. These little uh, these bars here. Not brilliant with health and safety to say we're at the top of this stair tower. Um, but look at all the bricks go into a kind of a, uh, a circle shape there. That is quite some craftsmanship there. Uh, I don't know if you heard Connor say it, but you could literally taste the pigeon shit. Um, not the healthiest of places. Uh, I should have wore a mask really but you was, the dust in there was incredible, um, awful, awful place, but at the same time, fascinating. And when you're walking around in the city and there's all those pigeons, this is where the pigeons are born and where the pigeons die. And of course, the inevitable old wiring system, was it bound by like, um, fibers like cotton or something some of those wires never assume those wires are not uh, live so we didn't touch them uh, but yes classic antique bit of uh, electricity supply there and like i say the the this mill was the first mill to be connected to be the manchester electricity supply that was to the roof but unfortunately the door at the top was locked now our brunswick mill is very close to an area of manchester called bradford Yes, Bradford is a city in the UK, but it's also a small area of Manchester. A former very industrial area, you can see nowadays it's a mixture between the urban decay of the old and the modern. And if you just take a look at that gasometer there, quite wonderful. And the whole area brings to mind for me a painting by a wonderful artist called Stephen Scholes, who painted a road just up from here called Hume Hall Lane. And there's our very gasometer in the distance uh, and the cooling towers of the Stewart Street power station, which is long since gone. 
a very wet and dreary evening in Manchester, but it's what we all grew up with. Here's an original picture of that area from the Manchester Libraries. And so I've took some scenes um, from the Manchester Library, some pictures, and I've put them together for you, including some uh, pictures of the old Bradford Colliery. Yes, Manchester had a pit. It had a, a coal pit, a coal mine, and it was called Bradford Colliery. So here are those pictures now. So there you go, a wonderful aerial view there of our mill, Brunswick Mill, pointed out by the Blue Arrow, probably from the 1930s this view, and at the front you've got Bradford Road, and at the rear there you can just see the Ashton Canal. But what of the future? Who are using these mills now? What sort of people are in there now doing things in there? How are they used? Well, behind our Brunswick Mill is the Wellington Mill. You can just see it there. And that day I was with the two Connors. And Connor there on the right was our guide. And he is one of the creatives that used the Wellington Mill. So in a bit of a change for me, we're going to take a look now at Wellington Mill and see just what sort of things go on in these mills nowadays. Okay, so we're about to head through now into this part of the mill and Connor's going to tell us about this little space that we've got here. So, Connor, this is an amazing space. Tell us about it. What happens here? What, what, how does it work? I don't so, get it. Yeah, so this is a community workshop. We pay each member about £10 a month, £25 a month, whatever you want. Right. And you get 24-7 access and you can come here whenever you want. And yeah, this is this is where we this is where we make things. We've got a community of about 130 people, and yeah, it's based in this massive old mill. It's wow, it's crazy. So can you show us around the uh, the workshop? I'll now? give you a tour. Yeah, right. I'll show you around everything. Brilliant. So this is snack space. We've got all sorts of unhealthy, delicious treats <laughs> and cans of everything. Health and safety equipment. We're coming to. Our woodworking shop. This is woody dusty as it's known. We've got all sorts of tools, lots of things that will cut your hands and arm off. It's great. Um, we've got a sort of working area. We've had people make all sorts of things from furniture to everything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, we've got band saws, hand tools, but we've got a cupboard full of craft stuff, including sewing machines, all sorts. So the thing is, we aim to have something for pretty much everyone who's a member here. This is 
part of our thing. It all seems like practical skills, isn't it? It's very much like woodworking, metalworking. Doing and making, yeah, that's our kind of thing. Which right. what mills were about, really. Yeah, well, right, yeah, it's actually quite right, Connor. Yeah. Um, and we'll go round to our electronics area. So we've got... Is this your bit? This is my, this is my town, this is a thing I love. We've got this all is sorts what you of, do, is it? This is what I do, we've got all sorts of components. LEDs, semiconductors. Wow. Well, let's have a look at them. Yeah, go for it. What so we've got some, These are transistors. All right. Um, we've got capacitors. Uh, we've got LEDs. We've got microchips. Wow. All sorts of stuff. So you, the stuff you make here is just purely hobby for your own interest. Just for fun. Right. Yeah, this is just for fun. We all enjoy it. It's a, oh, I'll some commission people. you. Yeah, <laughs> there are some people who uh, who do you know make things here and sometimes sell it, but this is primarily sort of a hobby based thing. Wow, so this is our electronics bench. It's soldering, it's got power supplies, all sorts, load of wire. It's very cool. You don't find a lot of places like this either where people come together. Like it's that. a bit of a find, really. Well, people don't do this anymore, do they? That's cool, isn't it? It's just in this mill off the street. You wouldn't know it was here just no. walking past. Is that a folder, isn't it? That's it. That's the, the first place I worked, had one of them. Is it a folding machine? That's it, yeah, yeah. isn't it? And then you, that's you it. Lift then that you, you lift that up and it folds the metal, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, I worked angle. on a folder in a factory <laughs> many so years cool. ago, many, many years ago. <laughs> we've also got under these uh, oil soaked rags, we've got this Ooh. amazing, beautiful metal lathe. Oh, a lathe. It's a thing of beauty, and we've got sort of, a couple of people who look after this and maintain this. And I love the. Uh, the oil, um, oh, I didn't see that. Little, yeah, amazing stuff. That is a beautiful machine. And the old chuck on there, that is a beautiful machine. That is amazing. I love it. This is all done just for fun, just because people care about making things and <coughs> maintaining things. So, what things. sort of age groups are in here? <coughs> we have, um, we have everyone. We have some young people, our youngest your, members. Of what are you, 20 odd? 25. Yeah. So <laughs> right. that bit out. <laughs> yeah, I'm 25, but uh, I think our youngest member is about 15, and he comes with his father, and I think our old, I don't know how old our oldest member is, but we've got the whole, whole spectrum, we've got... Oh, shebang. What, what are they, MIG, TIG? That's a MIG in it. Oh, I have no idea. It's not, I think that's not a MIG, area. if I remember, that's a MIG welder from my sheet metal working days. Uh, actually, I'm not sure, it looks like a MIG. Yeah, it's a MIG because it's got the, it drives the... Uh, the gas and the, uh, the, the welding cool. core out of there. Anyway, I'll shut up about that. Um, I've got, you know, as I call it, balcony area. All oh, right, brilliant. Ooh. Got an amazing view. Right, hang on a minute because that's not the view we want. We got on the roof, so this is the view you want. We're on some kind of pier that comes out from the Wellington Mill. It goes out this way. Uh, you'll see the Ashton Canal down the bottom here. There's Brunswick Mill, that's what we've just filmed. And like I said to you, there's some remains of, of another mill there. And you see the water tower for the Wellington Mill up there, just up there, amazing stuff. So it's actually quite amazing up here, I never thought I'd come up here. Um, this roof is concerning me a bit to us with you. But well, better view now of the, uh, can we go on hill on the roof? you can see down there, Ashton Canal towards Manchester. The music and the drums you can hear is over in Brunswick Mill, over here there's like, there's bands that rehearse in there. So it's like a soundtrack. <laughs> when you see the Ashton Canal down there, the skyline of Manchester. And over there, that's the area is called Bradford and East Manchester. And you've got the gasometer there that's probably, I hope it's listed and protected. But uh, you've got Manchester City there, and then you've got the water tower there to Wellington Mill. Absolutely fantastic. I think Connor's just having a bit of a photo moment there. So Connor, thank you so much for taking us around the two mills. That was in incredible. It's great to see your mill, Wellington Mill, working and something going on there, something current, amazing stuff. 
that's the end of the video thanks for watching and i shall see you very soon in the next video thanks again connor You're cheers welcome. pal thank yeah. you